KMED is also heard on translator K294AS, Ashland, at 106.7 FM. You know, I, I get uh, a lot of criticism because, I, I, you know, in alerts that we put out in correspondence, I, I identify that in this state it's the Democrats who are the problem. And people, even people who, are, you know, I'm quite friendly with say, you know, Kevin, that's a, that's a terrible approach because, you know, you, you know, not all Democrats are bad. But no, but it's the Democrats who control the state. And it is rapidly becoming, I mean, it is really becoming a police state where every single tiny part of your life is being micromanaged, taxed, or eliminated. I mean, for crying out loud, we now have a bill to ban leaf blowers. Leaf blowers. Yeah, Minor Dave let me know about that. Leaf blowers. I mean, this is, this state, we've got thousands of people who haven't had power and don't may not have power for the next three weeks. That's a problem. Leaf blowers are not a problem. And what we see now is this, this incessant war on privacy, freedom, and most certainly gun owners. I mean, we spoke yesterday, and just since then, you know, so much more has happened. The way I've been referring to it, uh, Kevin, is like last week I had you on briefly. We were talking about how it's like it's been so quiet. Uh, with anti-gun stuff not coming out. And then I swear they lanced the political pustule in Salem, and the anti-gun pus is just oozing out of Salem and spreading throughout the state right now. And you really, uh, the, yeah, it's just I, incredible. Listen, it, it's, it's, it's finally getting people's attention. Yesterday, I got letters from the county commissioner, county commissions of Jefferson County, Harney County, and Crook County. And all of them said pretty much the same thing. They said these attacks on gun rights are just going to be impossible for the people who live in our counties to comply with. These are people who may have a rifle in their truck when they're out on their ranch. And they're, you know, all very similar letters just saying, you got to help us. And frankly, I think they got to help us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> it's really going to be a question of, uh, I think, Klamath County, the voters passed a Second Amendment sanctuary ordinance, and apparently the county's refusing to put it on the books. Um, Columbia County. They uh, no, no, hold, hold on. Wait a minute. Klamath County voters passed it, and Klamath County Commission will not put it on their books? As of yesterday, that's what the, the guy who was actually responsible for getting that on the ballot called me yesterday and getting it passed, called me yesterday and said, this is not. These are not included in our ordinances. Um, and the county clerk, I think, said that the com- the commissioners hadn't prepared it. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, and we're waiting because, of course, we're talking to the lawyers and everything. Yeah. But uh, he spoke to Senator Dennis Lithicum, who said that the, the county doesn't have the authority to do that. The voters passed it. It's just, you know— it's law. We're starting to see this divide now. Uh, the same thing happened in Columbia County where they passed a Second Amendment preservation ordinance. And the guy who did that was a guy who was one of our volunteers. He's now working on a second one, which is a better, improved one. And the county commissioners are saying, no, we're not going to let you put this on the ballot. Did you say, he said, look, I just need you know the ballot title. I'll collect the signatures. No, we're not going to let you do it. <laughs> we're not going to let you do and it. And so there's you know a lawsuit going on there. You know, so you know, just, do, do you get the impression that some of the counties are concerned about making noise or defying the administrative state of tyrant Salem? Well, I on? mean, I certainly hope so. I mean, these three letters, which you know, interestingly, they all came yesterday. There's there's genuine fear here, and obviously, there are county commissioners who are on the ball and on top of things and recognize the dangers that are here. But they're here. I mean, when we saw what happened yesterday, well, okay, so now go to prison for having a plastic box with a spring in it. Go to prison for having a modern rifle. If you have a concealed handgun license, you can no longer drive your wife to the airport. Now, let me ask you about that. That's something that broke uh, you know, later in the day. So they're attacking concealed carry handgun uh, license people. And... We don't have problems in this state, do we? Exactly. I mean, I don't remember the last time a CHL holder shot up an airport or a university. And, of course, they're extending this to university or college property, school property, buildings adjoining it. Well, gosh, a PSU in Portland has like 50 acres of property that they're buildings all over the city. You could easily inadvertently be on their property with no idea that you were there. And so – why? What's the problem? Who's who's done anything wrong? And it's just bloodthirsty hatred for people who own firearms and the people who have 
been the most law-abiding and jumped through all the hoops, gotten concealed handgun licenses, now they're a target for absolutely no reason except that people like Persansky and Burdick and Manning and Dembrow hate them. Now, let me ask you, this Senate Bill 925 is what you talked about on your alert yesterday. Brzezinski, Burdick, Dembro, and Manning, all right? They're the ones that introduced this one. And it would say that you would be prohibited from being on school property or airport property while in possession of a firearm. So this would mean that, once again, you have a concealed carry permit, you are not a felon, you are one of the, you are a good man or a good woman, right? We know that. That is the deal. You have been checked out and background uh, checked and fingerprinted. I mean, all the rest of this sort of stuff. And what they're saying then is that if you were to drop your child off at school, you're a felon, right? Or or take your wife to the airport. You're a felon. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's absolute madness. And there's no point. But I mean, there's no point to most of this stuff now. It's just like, okay. We're in power. It's like the entire Oregon Democrat Party is being run by Alexandria Cortez, who's just, you know, a crazed bartender who says, I'm the boss. Yeah. And it's just whatever we want to do, we're going to do because we've got the numbers. And the hell with you people out in rural Oregon or the hell with you law-abiding people in, in urban areas who've, who've gotten licenses which they shouldn't need in the first place to protect themselves and their family. And now I'm going to say you won't even know when you're breaking the law. But it isn't even a matter of saying, okay – we don't want people in our terminals. We don't even want people in our parking lots. <laughs> you know, it's How, yeah. madness. And, and it gets worse. House Bill 3625 introduced uh, bans standard capacity magazines. Now, I have numerous firearms, and most of them came with 17-round magazines. That's what came with them from the manufacturer, Kevin. Those would not be permitted, would they? No, no. These are. I mean, these are just common devices that thousands of people have that have done, they've done nothing wrong. The people have done nothing wrong. The objects are not capable of doing anything wrong. But you, it's like having a bunch of, you know, psychotics who suddenly got it, you know, they took over the asylum mm. and now they're just going to punish everybody who doesn't think exactly like them. Is there political support to actually getting these passed and signed by the governor? Do you know? Well, well sure. I mean, look who's in charge. You know, the, the, the you, you get a guy, you get a guy like Bill Post gets t- taken off a committee simply because he sent a positive message to gun owners <sighs> through Twitter. I mean, hmm. that's you, you say something positive about gun owners or invite them to come to the Capitol to lobby, and boy, Tina Kotek is going to punish you. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally, this is just insane. You get a guy like Dennis Litticum, who denounced the death of a black man at the hands of the New York City police, and for that was decried as a racist. It's this state has just gone completely nuts. I guess the, the reason why I have you here, Kevin, is that it's to arms. I mean, no pun intended at this point. And this is serious. They're serious. It and- is dead serious, and I will tell you, Bill, the kind of emails and communication I'm seeing now, that is exactly what people are saying. People are saying this enough. Now, this is literally getting to the point where it's it is it's coming warfare. It's it's line will, it's line in the sand kind of uh, stuff that they're doing in Salem with this. You know that that's where this is. They're drawing lines in the sand, or they're making us draw draw lines in the sand. I, I, I think that's correct. I think they're making they're making us do it, and I think it's it's really getting scary out there. Hmm. You know, you have all these people both on the left and the right that are openly discussing the possibility of civil war. And I'm looking at what the Democrats are doing with these gun seizure, these magazine seizures and felonies and going after concealed carriers and all the rest of it. They're trying to light the fuse, aren't they? Aren't they trying to light the fuse? It's what it looks like to me. Well, to be perfectly frank, Bill, I think the fuse has been lit. It's been lit. I think the, I think the war has started. I mean, when you see the kind of things that people like Antifa get away with in cities like Portland, where the residents, the people who are trying to go to work are intimidated, sometimes they're assaulted, sometimes their property is destroyed, and the mayor is fine with it. Now they have a bill to ban campus police from having guns. The police can't have guns. The whole thing is just like they're... They're scared that somebody that somebody's going to commit a crime. There's be a mass shooting on a college campus, but they won't let the police be armed. And Makes perfect sense. Sure, 
I mean, look, again, we, you know, we've talked about this before. They want to say if you're under 21, you can't own a rifle, but we want you to vote when you're 16. And usually vote Democrat, I think, is what they're... Well, of course. Yeah, that's what they would be hoping for. So, Kevin, here it is in the... I know you've got so much to do, and like I said, I called you yesterday. Your your hair was on fire when I called you yesterday, and I appreciate you, you know, giving us a few minutes this morning. How can we help you? Well, I tell you, I mean, I really would like to see the people all over the state go back and encourage their county commissioners to take a stand on this stuff. And like I said, yet based on the letters I got yesterday, some of them are willing to do it. But that's really what people can do because, you know, unless you live in a really remote place, your county commissioners probably aren't too far away. And they need a visit. They need a phone call. They need to know that, my God, if the people in Portland and Salem can just keep tightening the noose, not to mention how many of your listeners and people in the state could very easily lose their homes if they're successful jacking up the property taxes to the point they want to do that. And so I think there's, you know, obviously they have to continue to pummel the people in Salem. I I'm obviously think that it's extremely important, and we can't stop doing that. But I think that they also need to go to their local legislators and say, you need to stand up for us. You know, you are close to us. You are much closer than a clown like Przansky or Manning is. And that's where I think the power change can come from. I would also add once again to put pressure on your uh, Oregon state legislators. And uh, I've been talking with, uh, you know, the Hermans and the Carl Wilsons and all the rest of it. I still think you got to be willing to walk out if they move Absolutely. forward with this crap. If they move forward well, with this know, crap, Kevin. I mean, they, otherwise, I mean, what good are you? I mean, you're they, you're they, in the minority. You're in the minority. The Republicans put out a press release. I think it was yesterday. I think it was yesterday, just saying basically, you know, we recognize that the that the state of the capital now is just that it's nothing but animosity. That it's just anger, and it's people who are not working together, people who are just at each other's throats. And you're exactly right. They have one tool, and that is leaving. And if they don't, then you're right. We don't have much reason for them. And why would I want to reelect these people, too? I mean, that's the other aspect of this. Exactly. All right. Uh, Kevin, appreciate the take. And I will certainly link to the alerts because uh, you also, even right now, we should be sending in emails and comments uh, to these morons. I mean, these uh, these fine, fine state legislators that are wishing to strip us of further rights here in the state of yeah, Oregon. And, and, and especially for nothing, for right. no reason other no than game. the hatred yeah. of us. And that's yeah. what I'm getting at. There's no reason. Yeah. And, and obviously, if somebody wants to take the time to actually sit down and write a letter, I'd uh, love to see those desks covered with mail. But in the end, it do something. Pick up the phone. Send out an email, use our website, but just we cannot let these people think that we're asleep. It's just too dangerous. All right, very good. Kevin Starr at Oregon Firearms Federation, OregonFirearms.org. Get signed up, if nothing else, for the alerts, and you will read about all these uh, amazing things. Hey, by the way, before we take off, who is this Republican that voted that introduced a bump stock ban? Huh? Could you oh, uh, Sherry Health. She took Newt Bueller's seat. Oh, okay. Well, that explains. Oh, that explains it. Okay, so uh, you know, we knew going in, she was F rated from us when she was running because she, when was campaigning as a gun control advocate. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, So it's not just uh, it's not just Democrats that are uh, fighting rights here, and this whole thing, especially going after concealed carry people who have, for all intents and purposes, are the most law abiding people in this state. Because if you're not. You lose your permit. It's pretty easy to, you know? Yeah, and obviously <laughs> it just hasn't been a problem. So I guess they had to create one. Yeah, so there we go. Kevin, thank you for being up, and thank you for your work. Keep sending money, folks, and get on the email and the letter trains because you've got to let these people know. You cannot be asleep. This is it. They are serious. We have to be serious back. Thank you, my friend. Good having you on. Thank you, Bill.